குட் மார்னிங் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு இந்தியன் எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் வீக்லி அனாலிசிஸ் பிராட் யூ பை சங்கரை ஏஸ் அகாடமி டிஸ்பிளேட் ஹியர் ஆர் த டாபிக்ஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் டுடே ஐ ஹாவ் செலக்டட் சிக்ஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் டாபிக்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த லாஸ்ட் வீக்ஸ் இந்தியன் எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் நியூஸ் பேப்பர் பிஃபோர் டிஸ்கஷன் ஐ ஹாவ் டூ இம்பார்ட்டன் அனவுன்ஸ்மெண்ட் சக்ரா இனிஷியேட்டிவ் பிராட் யூ பை சங்கரை ஏஸ் அகாடமி வி ஆர் ப்ரொவைடிங் ஃபிஃப்டி ப்ளஸ் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் செஷன்ஸ் ஃபைவ் ரேப்பிட் ரிவிஷன் செஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் நைன் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் டெஸ்ட் த நெக்ஸ்ட் அனவுன்ஸ்மெண்ட் இஸ் ரிகார்டிங் சங்கரை ஏஸ் அகாடமிஸ் Pre Stroming Test Series The batch 3 of Pre Stroming Test Series will begin on 16th November 2023. The first test will happen on 22nd November. So the link for both these two announcements are mentioned in the description. So make use of it. Now let us get into the discussion. Look at this article. It talks about ongoing Israel-Palestine war. In our discussion, we shall understand the brief history of Israel-Palestine conflict. See this conflict is a complex and long-standing dispute that has its roots in 19th and early 20th century but it escalated significantly after 1947 to explain it in detail we need to understand its historical background key events and major issues involved in this conflict first let us see the historical background in late 19th century this region called palestine was part of ottoman empire during this time jewish immigrants who are driven by various factors including religious and political motivations began to settle in the Palestine region so this is the beginning of zionist movement which aimed to establish a jewish homeland in palestine for more than 2000 years the palestine is occupied and resided by palestinian arabs during world war 1 the palestine region was under ottoman turkish empire This Ottoman Empire fought alongside Germany in First World War. Since they lost in the war, Britain and France took over the Turkish Empire and divided the empire's land among themselves. The area of Palestine came under the control of Britain. Now the British government issued a declaration called Balfour Declaration which expressed support for establishment of Jewish state in Palestine. See the British occupied this Palestine region from 1920 to 1948 during this time tensions between jewish and arab communities in palestine escalated the jewish population grew significantly due to immigration of jews from various parts of world into palestine so this was the source of conflict with the arab majority who are already residing in palestine in 1947 the united nations proposed a partition plan to address the ongoing conflict The UN General Assembly recommended the division of Palestine into two separate states, one for Jewish and one for Arabs. That is, Palestine was divided into Israel and Palestine. The city of Jerusalem was kept under international administration. This plan was accepted by Jewish leaders but was rejected by Arab leaders. So this marked a crucial turning point in the conflict. Following this UN partition plan, violence erupted in Palestine in May 14 1948 Israel declared its independence on the very next day the neighboring arab countries that is jordan egypt syria and iraq launched a full scale war against israel to support the palestinian arabs this conflict resulted in displacement of thousands of palestinians and marked the beginning of series of wars between Israel and its neighbors so in this 1948 war Israel won and occupied more territories from surrounding regions after this Israel Palestine conflict was marked by numerous wars uprisings and negotiations over years another important war happened in 1967 it is also known as six day war It was a brief conflict between Israel on one side, Egypt, Jordan, Syria on other side. Israel launched a preemptive strike and in just 6 days it captured territories like Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, Golan Heights from Syria and it also occupied Gaza Strip, West Bank, East Jerusalem. So Israel won the war and it resulted in significant territorial changes in Palestine region. After this There were multiple peace negotiations like Oslo Accords in 1993, Camp David Accords in 2000 and Annapolis Conference in 2007. These peace negotiations have yielded temporary ceasefires and limited agreements, but a final resolution 
is not yet arrived. Both Israelis and Palestinians claim Jerusalem as their capital. The status of this city has been a significant point of conflict. So this is a summary of Israel-Palestine conflict from 1948. I hope you got an overall view about the ongoing conflict. Now let us move to the next article discussion. Have a look at this news article. China is building an enormous telescope to detect ghost particles. See neutrinos are called as ghost particles. So this telescope will be the largest ever telescope to detect neutrinos. Now why are neutrinos called as ghost particles? We shall see in our discussion. See neutrinos are tiny subatomic particles similar to electrons but they have no electric charge. They are incredibly abundant in universe with trillions of neutrinos passing through our bodies every second. At first neutrinos were thought to have no mass but later scientists discovered that they have very small amount of mass. So neutrinos have mass. Neutrinos are incredibly hard to detect because they rarely interact with other particles. So they can be only seen when they interact with other particles. Due to this rare interaction, most neutrinos pass through everything without being noticed. So this is why they are called ghost particles because they are extremely challenging to track neutrinos. See neutrinos were first discovered in 1959 and they are second most abundant particle in universe after photon. Now what are the sources of neutrinos? Radioactive decays can produce neutrinos. Natural nuclear reactions in sun and stars produce neutrinos. Even artificial nuclear reactions in nuclear reactors can release neutrinos. Neutrinos are also produced in supernovas. So these are some of the important sources of neutrinos. See every elementary particle has an antiparticle. That means electron have an antiparticle called positron. Neutrinos have antiparticle called antineutrinos. But if you take electron it has negative charge and its antiparticle have opposite charge. But in case of neutrinos it doesn't have any charge and the antiparticle for neutrinos that is antineutrinos also doesn't have any charge. So it is impossible to differentiate neutrinos from their antiparticles. So these are some of the important facts about neutrinos. Now coming back to the news. As we saw earlier neutrinos are called ghost particles because they rarely interact with other particles. But sometimes neutrinos interact with water molecules. So that is why China is building the largest neutrino detector underwater in South China Sea. Another largest neutrino detector is also present in Antarctic region which is called Ice Cube. In India also there is a neutrino observatory which is currently being built in Thani district in Tamil Nadu. So this is all about the news. Now let us move to the next topic. Now this article talks about CAR T cell therapy. Let us look into the important information given in this article. This is very important for our prelims exam because UPSC has been asking a lot of questions related to emerging technologies in medical field. So CAR T cell therapy is a short form for Chimeric Antigen Receptor T cell therapy. It is a form of immunotherapy that is used to treat cancer. In this therapy, a patient's own T cells are genetically modified to enhance their ability to target and destroy cancer cells. Here T cell is a type of white blood cell which can fight cancer cells. Now let us see how this CAR T cell therapy works. In this therapy, a regular immune cells called T cells are transformed into powerful cancer fighters known as CAR T cells. So T cells are transformed into CAR T cells. See here T cells are special white blood cells that help our body to fight infections and illness. So they are naturally skilled at killing cancer cells. By using CAR T cell therapy, we modify the T cells by changing their genes to make them even better at attacking cancer. After genetic modification, we put these supercharged CAR T cells back into the patient's body. These supercharged T cells then get to work and attack cancer cells. So this is how CAR T cell therapy works. This is essentially effective for blood cancers like leukemia and lymphomas. Overall CAR T cell therapy is like turning your body's own immune cells into cancer killing superheroes. Note that this therapy is mainly used to fight blood cancers. Recently, Central Drugs Standard Control Organization 
granted market authorization for India's first indigenously developed CAR T cell therapy, which is called NexCAR 19. So, this paves a way for commercial launch of T cell therapy in India. It will be available to cancer patients in India at very low cost compared to other countries. So, in UPC, there may be a question like, what do you mean by NexCAR 19? which is recently seen in the news. The answer is, it is a technology related to treatment of cancer. Like this, we need to understand some basic information about the recent news. See, this next CAR-19 is a type of CAR T-cell therapy which is developed by Immuno ACT, which is a company incubated at IIT Bombay. So, this particular T-cell therapy is designed to target cancer cells that carry CD19 protein. This protein acts like a flag on cancer cells and this allows CAR T cells to recognize and attack themselves and start the process of destroying cancer cells. So this is how next CAR 19 therapy works. Here we have to note the important key names like next CAR 19, CD19 protein, CAR T cell therapy, what is T cell. So these are important facts for prelims examination. So this is all about this news article discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Take a look at this article. Indian government has taken measures to address rising onion prices by imposing a minimum export price on onion exports. This move aims to control the export of onions from India and ensure an adequate supply of onion within the country. So this will reduce the rising onion prices. In this discussion, we shall see about MEP. Minimum export price is a price below which an exporter is not allowed to export a commodity from India. The government fixes MEP for selected commodities to arrest domestic price rise and also to augment the domestic supply. Basically, it is the minimum price at which commodities can be exported from the country. Government imposes MEP under Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. Note that minimum export price is different from minimum support price. This MEP is different from MSP. MSP is the minimum price at which government purchase crops from the farmers. So don't confuse MEP with MSP. Now if we look at the onion production, Maharashtra is a leading producer of onion in India. It is followed by Karnataka, Gujarat, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. Belgium, Bijapur, Bagalkot in Karnataka are major onion producing regions. There are various varieties of onions cultivated throughout the world like red onions, white onions, yellow onions. In India, red and white onions are mostly grown and if you look at this map, these are the major onion producing states in India and most of them lies on the western part of India. One important fact about onion, onions contain phytochemicals called quercetin. And this phytochemical is being studied for their potential health promoting properties. Here phytochemicals are chemical compounds that are produced by plants which have bioactive properties. Phytochemicals are generally produced by plants to help them to resist fungi, bacteria and plant virus infections. So the phytochemicals are used by the plants as poisons against insects or virus that affect them. A few examples of phytochemicals are flavonoids, phenolic acids, curcumin, carotenoids, etc. So onion also contains a phytochemical called quercetin. So this is all about this discussion. Here we have seen basics about minimum export price, important onion producing states. Now we shall move to the next topic. Look at this article. It talks about criticisms regarding electoral bonds. Recently, a case is going on in Supreme Court regarding the issues with electoral bond scheme. So in this discussion today, we are going to see about basics about electoral bond scheme and important issues associated with it. Now first, what is electoral bond? See electoral bonds are instruments or securities that are used to donate funds to political parties. Imagine you want to support a political party by giving them money. Instead of giving direct cash, you go to a bank and buy an electoral bond. You then take this electoral bond and give it to political party you support. They can deposit in the bank and get the money. In this way, anyone can give funds to political parties. One unique thing about the bond is, donor's name is not written on them. 
So the party receiving the money doesn't know who gave it. It's like giving a gift anonymously. Even though your name is hidden, government keeps track of all electoral bonds that are issued and check how much money each political party gets. So in this way, it is aimed to be transparent and eliminates illegal funding to political parties. See, electoral bonds were first introduced in 2018. The scheme was introduced as a part of Finance Bill 2017. These bonds are only available in State Bank of India and not in any other banks. So these are the basics about electoral bond scheme. With these basics, let us now understand the issues associated with electoral bond scheme. The first issue is anonymity and lack of transparency. One of the major criticism is that the scheme allows for anonymous donations to political parties. See, donors can purchase these bonds without their identities being disclosed to public. This lack of transparency can raise concerns about source of political funding and this potentially allows for black money to enter into politics. Then there is lack of accountability. The scheme does not require political parties to disclose the identity of donors when they redeem the bonds. So this lack of accountability can make it difficult to track where the money is coming from that potentially leads to corruption and unethical practices. Then the third important issue is possible influence of corporations. Critics argue that electoral bond scheme may enable corporations and wealthy individuals to have influence over political parties and government decisions. So they can make significant donations without any public scrutiny. Then the fourth important issue is inequality in political funding. Small and regional parties often have limited access to electoral bonds. This lead to unequal distribution of funds and create disparities between big national parties and the smaller parties. Then the fifth important issue is impact on electoral integrity. The lack of transparency regarding the electoral bonds can undermine the integrity of electoral process. It can be challenging for citizens to know who is funding the parties which may erode public trust in the political system. Then there are legal challenges. See, electoral bond scheme has faced many legal challenges in India which raises concern about compatibility with laws like right to information and transparency. There have been concerns that the scheme could have used for money laundering or illegal activities as it provides a way to funnel large amount of money to political parties with a limited oversight. So various civil society organizations, activists and opposition parties have called for reforms to make electoral bond scheme more transparent and accountable. They argue that these reforms are necessary to maintain the democratic and electoral integrity of political system. Overall, the electoral bond scheme has sparked a debate about balance between protecting donor privacy and ensuring transparency and accountability in political funding. So it remains as a contentious issue in Indian politics. So this is all about electoral bond scheme. Now we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankara's YouTube channel. Thank you.